69 million dollars that's how much beeple sold one of his nfts for the nft market recently hit over 20 billion dollars and everybody is going nuts famous people are even getting into the mania like sports stars politicians rappers and even dead people what what the f the weekend even put an nft in one of his latest music videos so you being the savvy business person that you are you want to get in on the fun as well and that's exactly what i'm going to teach you to do in this video and by the end of this video you are going to know more about nfts than 99 percent of people in the world and who knows maybe you might be the next nft millionaire or maybe you make an nft spend 50 dollars in gas fees in order to post it online and then nobody ends up buying it that could also happen too you really do be like that sometimes. <laughs> you do. But all joking aside, you never know. And that might sound like a bold claim. So let me tell you step by step what I'm going to be showing you in this video. And by the way, guys, this video was very expensive and it took forever to make. And then I also have a gift later on in the video that I'm going to give you that also took a long time to make. And so if you don't mind, could you please just gently tap that like button? I mean, I would appreciate it, but no big deal if you don't. I literally don't care. So really quick, before we get into the video, um, there are timestamps down in the description below. I'm also going to go over at the very beginning what the whole video is going to be about. So first, we're going to go over what exactly an NFT is. Then we're going to go over why NFTs are so popular. Then we're going to talk about the use cases for NFTs, aka why do they actually have value? Then we're going to go over the main websites and the biggest players in the NFT space. And these are going to be sites that you really need to know if you want to get into NFT. Then I'm going to be going over via live demonstration first how to buy an NFT, then how to make an NFT. And again, I'm going to be doing all of this with live demonstration. Then I'm going to take that NFT that I made and I'm going to list it for sale. So we'll be talking about how to sell an NFT. And then after I do that, we're going to go over how to flip NFTs for profit. And then I will be revealing the best free websites and tools for doing research on NFTs. And then I'm going to be revealing some secrets on how to get into NFT projects when they are first minted and that basically means right when they're released and this is basically how you get in on the ground floor level and you are the first one to know about it before it even gets dropped and then keep in mind i do have a present later on in the video for you as well which you're really going to love people absolutely love my presence this is something that's going to help you if you're interested in nfts and it's genuinely a present it's completely free you don't have to enter your email address or anything like that it's just a sincere present from me to you all right, so what exactly is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token. And non-fungible basically means that it can't be duplicated or replaced by an identical item. A dollar bill, for instance, is fungible because all dollar bills are more or less the same. And then a token is an asset that resides on a blockchain. So a non-fungible token is basically a unique digital asset that resides on a blockchain that cannot be duplicated. Now, these digital assets are typically collectible and they can be bought, sold, or traded. And this could include, but is not limited to, artwork music, digital real estate, and collectibles like trading cards. So for instance, you could buy a Pokemon NFT that's attached to a trading card, and then you could slide it into a slot, and all of a sudden you see the Pokemon in 3D right in front of you. There are also NFTs for items within video games like skins, weapons, and avatars. And we're really gonna get into that one later because that one's extremely interesting. And the possibilities are almost endless here. Individual creators, literally anyone out there, can create a unique digital item put a stamp on it within the blockchain network and then sell it to somebody without the need for a third party intermediary like a pawn shop or an art dealer. So instead of artists having to get extremely lucky or get chosen by somebody or rely on the charity of others, they can make really good money on their own. Now let's go over why NFTs are so popular. Now NFTs have technically been around since the launch of Bitcoin back in 2009, but it wasn't until recently that the NFT market has really taken off. NFTs have become one of the biggest crypto crazes of 2020 and 2021. NFT sales were around 95 million in 2020, and 
and over 12 billion in 2021. We've seen digital artists like Mike Winkleman, also known as Beeple, sell an NFT for $69 million. We've seen athletes like Michael Jordan and Lionel Messi launch their own collections, but you don't have to be famous to sell an NFT. In fact, the most expensive collections were not started by famous people. CryptoPunks, for instance, was launched by a two-person team in 2017 of Matt Hall and John Watkinson. And there are 10,000 CryptoPunks, and the last time I checked, the most expensive one is CryptoPunk 7523. And this one CryptoPunk out of 10,000 recently went for $11.7 million. Bruh. So this is why you're hearing all the craze over NFTs. We're seeing politicians get into it, all kinds of different famous people. But that begs the question, why would anyone actually buy an NFT? AKA, why do NFTs have value? Why? 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 I mean, this kind of seems like something where you would invest your money and then immediately lose everything. And it's gone. So going back to the $11 million crypto punk, you might be thinking, why would anybody spend time on that? I mean, after all, you can just right click it and save it right to your computer. And yeah, you can absolutely do that. But there's one problem. You think it's funny to take screenshots of people's NFTs, huh? You don't actually own the picture. Let's say you actually owned a painting of a CryptoPunk in real life. You could take that, you could frame it, and you could mount it on your wall, and everybody would know that you own it. And why do they know? Well, it's really obvious. It's in your house, it's mounted on your wall, you can do whatever you want with it at any time. It's not quite the same online, though. Things are much more complicated in the digital world. Verifiable owner ownership of a piece of art is very difficult for anybody to tell online. And that is the number one reason why NFTs have actual value. And this is honestly really important and you have to understand this and how significant it is. Non-fungible tokens are a way to have verifiable ownership of something online. Each NFT is verified on the blockchain and has a unique token ID that anybody can check at any time. And the history of ownership of the NFT is attached to that token ID and is on the blockchain. Now you might be thinking that's great and all you have the verifiable ownership, but let's be real here. It's probably almost completely free for all these projects to create these NFTs and then post them online. And you are sort of right here, but there's a catch. The number two reason that these NFTs have value is because they are scarce. There will never be another CryptoPunk 7523. And the fact that it was one of the original NFTs to explode in value and get to that $10 million mark makes it even more rare. It's almost like having a rare trading card like an original Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan, or Charizard. It's pretty much like owning a piece of history and that's why they're worth so much. But you know what's worth more than an NFT? You are, and don't forget it. Now let's get on to the number three reason. Number three is because people get to flex. It's kind of a weird way of showing that not only do you have a lot of money, but you're also really tuned in to what's happening in the world. You're basically ahead of the times. This is why you see superstars like The Weeknd buying NFTs in his music videos, because it's almost like owning a supercar or wearing branded clothing, and whether you like it or not, people like to flex. And this is why you see a bunch of famous people on Twitter putting NFTs as their profile picture. The number four thing that gives NFTs value is the history of ownership. Oftentimes, the people who owned an NFT can actually increase the value all on their own. Think about it. There is a record of every single person that owns the NFT. So if somebody famous buys an NFT and then ends up selling it later on, it's almost like they put their autograph on it. They owned it at one person and it will always show that history of ownership no matter what. And number five, which is probably the most important thing of all is utility. And yes, NFTs can actually be useful. And that's where we're going to be going over in this next section, NFT use cases. Now, after hearing reasons one through four, you probably understand NFTs a little bit better, but you're probably still a little bit skeptical about this magical internet art. Well, the first use case is going to be gaming. Now, in order to understand this one, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a short story. Back around 2004, 2005, I started playing this game called RuneScape. And at one point I owned an item called a party hat. It was basically this little paper hat that you could wear on your head in the video game. And when 
when these little hats first came out, basically everyone had them. It was an event that you had to do and you would get these little crackers. You'd open the cracker and you would get a hat. I didn't start RuneScape in time to actually do those events. It was an event that was for Christmas, I think in 2002, but I started RuneScape a few years after that. And at one point I was able to own one of these hats. So at first they were basically useless and they were worth maybe like one gold piece, which is what the currency was in that video game. Now they're worth 50 billion gold pieces. Now that probably doesn't mean anything to you, but just to put this in perspective, this part is going to blow your mind. Now, back in the day, you could have bought one of these for around $30, and now the most expensive one is worth over 12,800. Bruh. And this is for a game that isn't even that popular compared to Fortnite or Call of Duty. And it's a single piece of clothing. Now imagine how much really rare in-game items would be worth on those games. Probably in the hundreds of thousands. And let's not forget the fact that, you know, in RuneScape, it's actually pretty difficult to exchange items for real life money. In fact, I think it's actually against the rules. Whereas with NFT technology, not only would it be much easier, but it would probably be incentivized by the company themselves. So this would create a situation situation where people are incentivized to play new games because if the game gets really popular and explodes, a lot of these early NFTs are going to be worth a lot of money. Imagine if I had collected a bunch of party hats back then that were worth basically nothing. I mean, even as a kid, I could have bought a bunch of them for around $30. If over a few years I bought a bunch of them and I saved up around 100 party hats, I could be retired right now. You can also sell NFTs of certain characters within the game as well. And this is something you see happening in a lot of upcoming games like Voxies. And just as an example, you could probably relate to, I know a lot of people probably play Call of Duty and everybody remembers the famous Rose skin that was released on Modern Warfare as well as Warzone. And if you had this Rose skin, you had a serious advantage over other players because you were basically invisible if you were in a dark corner or just in a dark area in general. If you missed out on it, too bad, you can't get this. And eventually they did nerf the skin to the point where it wasn't as OP, but many people that didn't happen to log in and get the stupid Rose skin had to suffer for months because they would get killed over and over again by Rose skins that were camping in a dark corner. I can't even see him! I can't even see him! Now imagine if you were able to just buy that skin for yourself as an NFT, then you could be the troll that's camping in the dark corner and killing people. Much better, right? And honestly, I could just go on and on about this one with virtual reality, the metaverse, all of this exploding onto the scene, it is going to be unstoppable. And I really do think, even though this is kind of scary to think about, the future is gonna look a lot like the movie Ready Player One, where people are gonna be spending a lot of times basically in video games or in the metaverse. And video games or the metaverse is probably the biggest use case of NFTs, in my opinion. It's the one that I'm most excited about. But number two is going to be digital digital proof of ownership. And you could use this for a lot of different practical cases like property deeds, tickets to movies, concerts, sporting events, car titles, and of course, art. Number three real life use case is exclusive access. In some cases, owning an NFT will give you exclusive access to groups, clubs, parties, and people. So for instance, a famous musician that you're a big fan of may have a monthly party where anybody who has access to a certain collection of NFTs can attend. So if you own that NFT, you have the right to come and meet them. The number four use case is DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. And this is basically a group of people who own a token or in this case an NFT and they vote in order to make decisions. And an in real life use case for this one is making shareholders of a company have an easier time voting on the direction of the company itself. So right now, if you are a shareholder of a company, you technically can have some influence on the direction the company goes, but it's really difficult and you have to go out of your way. If they just made stocks into NFTs, it would be much easier for you to vote on the direction of the company. So the company could say, hey, we're thinking about either launching this project or this project, and it's going to take a lot of resources. Which one do you think we should go for? And then you could just instantly vote via your phone on the direction of that company. Another thing that would be made incredibly easy is voting for elections or different laws in your country. So there's just so many different use cases, and I could just go on and on here, but the video would go too long. So I just wanted to show you a 
few of them just to show you what is possible with NFTs and why they're such a big deal. So how do you buy and sell an NFT? So before we get into how to buy and sell an NFT, there's a few things that you want to consider. First of all, what marketplace do you think you should use? Then you need to consider what cryptocurrency you need to use in order to fund your wallet. So some of the biggest crypto websites are going to be OpenSea, Axie Marketplace, Larva Labs, NBA Top Shot Marketplace, as well as Rarible. In this particular case, when I go over my example, I am going to be using OpenSea and the cryptocurrency I'm using is going to be Ethereum. So the first thing you need to do is set up a Web3 wallet like MetaMask. And you need this in order to fund your wallet with Ethereum and then use that Ethereum on OpenSea. So you'd go to a website like MetaMask metamask.io you'd click download I'm going to go ahead and install the metamask and i'm going to add it I'm going to give it permission and then you're just going to click get started now if you already have a wallet of course you would import it but in this particular case i'm showing you guys how to do it so you would go create a wallet you're going to go ahead and agree on this part, you would create a password, very standard. Then after you agree to the terms of use, you go ahead and create. And then it's gonna take you through a series of steps in order to secure your wallet. At this part, it's going to reveal your secret recovery phrase. Now, this is gonna be a bunch of words that you need to write down and you probably need to write it down in several different places. You don't wanna have it just in one place in case a fire burns it or something like that. You know, your house could potentially burn down. It's a good idea to have it in several different places, especially if you're gonna be putting a lot of value on this wallet. And boom, just like that, it's that easy. You now have your own MetaMask wallet. Now you would basically use the wallet by going up into the top right, and you would see that it runs on Ethereum. However, you can hold a bunch of different tokens on this wallet. You can buy tokens, you can send tokens, you can swap tokens. Now, the way that you would actually get tokens to your MetaMask wallet is the easiest way to do it is to just buy some on a website like Coinbase. So you would buy Ethereum, for instance, and then you would transfer that Ethereum onto your wallet. And for this video, I actually did that several days ago in order to get ready for that. So I will go ahead and roll that clip right now. So in this particular case, I am going to be transferring some Ethereum to my MetaMask wallet. Now, MetaMask is a very common wallet that people have when they use the Ethereum blockchain. So from the homepage, what you would want to do is go to the top left, click on assets, and then you're going to go ahead and click on the Ethereum. Then you want to go to wallet. And then over here, you see that it is already ready to be sent. So in this particular case, again, I'm going to do a thousand Ethereum. This is where you want to copy in the address of wherever you are sending your Ethereum. Now be very, very careful with this process. First of all, you wanna make sure that you get the right string of letters and numbers, and that's what it's gonna look like, a bunch of random letters and numbers. And then second of all, you want to make sure that not only is it the right string of letters and numbers, but on top of that, you want to make sure that you're sending it to an actual Ethereum wallet. Because if you send Ethereum to some random wallet like Solana or Bitcoin by accident, you may never be able to get it back. So I went ahead and I pasted my wallet address in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a note here, ETH1K demo. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. It wants you to review all the important information and make sure that everything's right. And it looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and send now. And in this particular case, I have set up two factor authentication on my device. And so that's where I would enter it in. All right, awesome. So it is done. So like it says there, usually the transactions take less than 10 minutes. All right, so I looked for a little bit and I found a collection that I thought was interesting. It might actually have some resale value at some point. And uh, some of the more expensive ones in this collection have actually gone up quite a bit. Uh, this one does have a lightsaber here. It's the Whales collection. So I am gonna go ahead and buy one. So basically you just have to connect your MetaMask wallet. And then once you've connected your MetaMask wallet, it should be really easy. Check this box, confirm checkout. Now here's the crazy part, guys. Um, 
the whale itself is about $40. The gas fees for this transaction are going to be astronomical. The gas fees are going to be about $90 in order to buy this NFT. So I'm going to go ahead and click confirm, lock it in. All right. And about 10, 15 seconds later, I am now the proud owner of a whale with a lightsaber. And by the way, guys, the way I found this NFT was there's a ton of different ways that you can sort them. So, you know, first of all, you can just go to all items and just look at all the NFTs that are available here. You can sort them by single items or bundles, sort by recently listed, recently created, sold, received, ending soon, price low to high, price high to low, uh, highest last scale as, as well as oldest. Um, on the side here, there's also some really good stuff you can do. There's a lot of filters and all kinds of stuff you can sort there. So, you know, what I did is I did minimum and then I did a max over here. I think I did 150 or something like that. And I clicked apply. And then from here, I scrolled down, looked at a bunch of photos and I found one that I thought was pretty cool. All right, so next we're gonna get into how to create an NFT step-by-step. -step. And this part is kind of simple. I mean, you just design an original photo and then you upload it onto the website. Now, you can actually go to websites and have other people create them for you. An example of this is fiverr.com. So if you want to check on Fiverr, you can just type in NFT here and then you can see here that there are many artists who will create NFTs for you. There are even artists who will create 10,000 NFTs for $70. Okay, so you can literally have an entire NFT creation and an entire collection made for you for around $70 on Fiverr. Now, if you don't want to have somebody else create the NFT for you, there are many free ways of creating artwork online. Canva.com is a great website for creating artwork and it's completely free. PickMonkey.com is also a really good one. I've used both of these in the past. GIMP is another really good program you can use to create artwork. And then a paid version that I personally use just because I think it's the best is going to be Photoshop. And this is sold by Adobe. It's a really powerful piece of software. Uh, there is a bit of a learning curve with it but i use it to create my thumbnails for instance and a bunch of different artwork so you can basically pay somebody else to create it or you can create it in house and in my particular case i decided to create my collection in house so uh on the main page here you're going to go up to the top right and click create going to connect my wallet and i am going to go ahead and drag my nft in there it is a picture of hummus if you couldn't tell all right, so the link I'm gonna leave is to my YouTube channel, put the description as hummus. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and click create. And there you go. I just created my first ever NFT, hummus. Now, in this particular case, I just uploaded one photo. You may want to upload a collection. I mean, there's collections on here of 10,000 photos, and there are ways of doing that that you know don't require you to upload them all manually. Um, they're very difficult, very detailed to do. What I suggest if you want to do that is to actually just hire somebody on Fiverr to do it for you. So going back to Fiverr here, I'm gonna say upload NFT. Okay, and there's a bunch of different gigs that offer to upload all of your NFTs uh, to OpenSea. And these range from $20 all the way up to several hundred dollars. So that's what I personally recommend. Um, the ways of uploading them, they're really buggy. It, it, you know, it's very complicated. It, it takes some knowledge of programming and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, this is what I recommend doing personally. All right, so the next part of this video is going to be how to sell an NFT. So we've uploaded this beautiful artwork of hummus. Wow, look at this. Do you know what this means? Now it's time to unfortunately let it go and sell it. So we're gonna go up here to the top right and click sell. I'm gonna go ahead and list this for a very reasonable 0.1 Ethereum. I'll put the duration as, yeah, we'll just do one. How about, how about six months? Yeah, that sounds fine. And... I'm gonna go ahead and click complete listing. It is connecting to the wallet again. And it looks like it's gonna cost me about $98 in order to just uh, sell this on OpenSea. So guys, if you appreciate me doing this video, please make sure to gently tap that like button. And uh, by the way, I'm gonna give you an alternative later on in the video to show you much better ways of listing NFTs and selling them that will cost you basically nothing. So I confirmed it and it took about a minute and it looks like the transaction went through. So now I just have to sign. Awesome, so this is listed, it's up there. You can see it if you want to. 
and it's good to go. And it looks like it's wanting me to set up email notifications so I will know when someone buys this. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I verified myself, set my account up, and uh, everything is good. So uh, this is my account, Shane Hummus, a uh, picture of my, my hummus bowl there. And I am now the proud owner of a pixelated picture of hummus, as well as a whale with a lightsaber NFT. Now I just need to start secretly paying influencers to promote my NFT. And the next thing you know, it's gonna snowball and Logan Paul is gonna be buying up my hummus NFT, hopefully. Just kidding, obviously that is morally questionable and it would probably get to the point where you might end up going to jail. So this section is going to be how to flip NFTs. Now I just wanna mention here that you should be very careful because there's a lot of people doing some very sketchy stuff here. And because of the fact that this is a pretty much completely unregulated market they are promoting nfts in a way that may or may not be illegal in the future they put you in jail right away right away but anyways i'm gonna go over a bunch of websites that are incredibly important for you to know about if you are going to get into the nft game and start flipping them now the first one is going to be rarity.tools and this is basically a website that covers all of the newest and upcoming mints. And minting is basically what I just did where I published it, but a lot of them will actually say that they're going to be minting an NFT before they actually do it. And the reason for this is of course to build hype, get people interested in it before it actually hits the market. Now, if you know that an NFT collection is gonna end up having really rare uh, high priced NFTs, you probably want to get in at the very beginning. And that's what rarity.tools allows you to to do. Think back about the time when PS5s came out for the first time, right? So PS5 was released, people were going and buying them right when it was released at the store, and then they were flipping them online, sometimes for double the price. This is basically the same thing. A lot of people, if they think a collection is going to be valuable, they will buy them up right at the very beginning, and then they will flip them right afterwards. So this right here, you can see all the collections at the top. CryptoPunks is still number one. You can also click here and see upcoming and notice most of them are Ethereum, of course, but you also see some that are Solana. And Solana, by the way, is much cheaper than Ethereum. So, you know, I'm really hoping that Solana kind of overtakes Ethereum because Solana is so much cheaper. It's basically free in order to upload NFTs if you use Solana. And then one thing that's really great about rarity.tools is you are able to categorize the different NFTs in different ways. So for instance, let's go ahead and look at some of these collections. So this is the Vox collectibles. And what you can do is you can look at all of these with different traits. So for instance, let's say you want to only look at the ones that have a mohawk, right? So that's what this hawk chop is, I'm guessing, all right? So you click on it and yeah, a lot of these have mohawks. And then you can kind of sort these different traits by rarity, price, high to low, recently listed, etc. Now you'll notice that there are certain traits that these NFTs have that for whatever reason, people end up paying more for them. So I'm gonna sort the ones that actually have glasses and what it shows you here, and this is something very important for you to know, is the price floor. So it looks like the price floor for these is 2.9 Ethereum, which is approximately like $12,000 or so. And what the price floor is, is it's the least expensive NFT in that collection, right? So let's say the most expensive NFT is like 100 Ethereum or something. Uh, unfortunately, you know, your collection is only as strong as its weakest link because that's how people like to look them up, right? So the price floor is 2.9 Ethereum, meaning the least expensive one is around 2.9 ETH. You can also look up the seven day volume, the total volume, the seven day price average, uh, how many different owners have these different boxes. All these things are incredibly important for you to know for you to gauge how legitimate an NFT collection is. My second tip is to use an NFT marketplace other than Ethereum. So the most obvious one, of course, is Solana. Now, Solana is one of my favorite cryptocurrencies. I absolutely love the technology. And SolanArt.io is probably the biggest marketplace for Solana NFTs. Now, like I said, one huge advantage of using Solana over Ethereum is you remember those ridiculous gas fees that I had to pay like 80 to $100 just to sell or buy one? Well, if you use Solana, those fees are going to be pretty much negligible. Now, SolanArt is really cool because it gives you information in such a way where it's pretty easy to read. So, you know, for instance, Shadowy Supercoder. This collection has 10,000 NFTs. 
The average price is about 91.9 Solana. The volume over the last seven days is 1.7 million, so it's very active and it's got a market cap of 178 million. You can also look at the volume percentage over the last 24 hours. So it looks like it's gone down by about 48%. And then the floor price looks like it's around 79 to 80 Solana. And then you can also just click right here and look at the price history. So it looks like the average price here for a long time was around 30 Solana. And then recently it went up to around 90 Solana. So recently it tripled. I mean, this is just incredible information to have at your fingertips. You can also filter this by the attribute. So you can look at all the different types and see which colors are selling for the best. So let's click on gold. Looks like gold is not selling for that much. It's around 30 or so, so that's not great. But for whatever reason, Noir looks like it's going up. So it's actually selling for around 36. And again, for each attribute, you can look at the daily volume, the daily sales, the total volume, the total sales, etc. Now, I don't want to just talk about Solana. Um, VeChain also has their own marketplace. Uh, Polygon Matic has their own marketplace. So definitely check around depending on whatever your favorite cryptocurrency is. Now, number three, I'm going to tell you just like a really easy and simple strategy. And this is mostly just kind of a common sense thing. But honestly, this is still incredibly important. It's kind of like in basketball, you know, learning how to dribble is really important. Learning how to shoot is important. It's the basics, it's the fundamentals, but that doesn't mean that it's not one of the most important things that you absolutely need to know. With that being said, looking at high volume, high volume is incredibly important, especially early on in the project. So let's say you didn't buy something from the project right before it dropped because you weren't sure whether it was gonna be good or not and you're still wanting to follow it and evaluate it. Well, if something has been out for like six months and you only see like one Ethereum in its history, that's probably a bad sign. That means that not very many people are interested in it. It has a very low volume. If it has a high volume, that means a lot of people have viewed it and a lot of people have participated in it. There is a ton of interest there. Now, when it comes to buying projects right when they drop because you believe that that is going to be a profitable project, this is the part where you kind of just use common sense. Let's say there is a creator that has dropped projects in the past that have turned out to be huge sellers, something like the Bored Ape Yacht Club. If they then list another project and they have these starting prices similar to what the Bored Ape Yacht Club is selling for now, you wouldn't want to buy that. And the reason for that is because when the Bored Ape Yacht Club first started, they were selling it for very reasonable prices. So if something seems too high, especially at the very beginning, then just simply do not buy it. However, let's say the people who created CryptoPunks announced that they are coming out with another project and it's really reasonable. That would be something that you might be interested interested in jumping in on. Now, those are two very obvious examples. Usually you wouldn't use the ones that are the most popular, but I think you get my point here. Now for number four, I'm going to go over some other tools very quickly that are really nice to use. They're awesome. Not really going to have time to show you how to use them, but they're great resources that I've used. All right. So the first one is IC.tools. This is another one that's just really great to find those niche collections that are really undervalued. And it's great for visualizing all the statistics that you need to know and doing research on them. So this one, for instance, will show you the trending collections. So for instance, there's the Angry Pitbull Club. It looks like this one's trending. And it kind of shows you the volume, the average price, the sales, the mints, etc. And you can also quickly access their Twitter, see if it looks legitimate or if it looks like they maybe bought Twitter followers. You can go to their official website and check it out. Their Discord, you can check out their Etherscan, like all these different things that are good for you to do your due diligence. Another good one for doing research is nftpricefloor.com. And this is just yet another way for you to find those undervalued projects. Another one is app.traitsniper.com. And this one is specifically good for looking at different traits, like seeing which traits are likely to end up being valuable. So let's say there's a certain collection and you know, you're not sure which one to buy, but with your knowledge of the different traits and which ones are the most valuable in other collections, you can kind of predict which of those NFTs are going to be the most valuable. And traitsniper.com will really help you with that. Another great website for doing analytics research specifically is gonna be dune.xyz. And another one that's good for analytics, but it's maybe a little bit more user-friendly is nftgo.io. 
In the next part, I'm gonna talk about how to participate in an actual NFT drop. So you would go to a website like rarity.tools, you'd click on upcoming, and then you'd look at a collection that you're interested in. So you find one that you'd like, let's say Tiny Tigers Special Christmas Edition. You go to their website and it will usually prompt you, yeah, it looks like right here, uh, in order to sign up for it. So you'd click here, you'd connect your wallet, and boom, you would be able to get it right when it drops. All right, guys, so I showed you all the secret websites. That was my gift to you in this video. And really quickly, I wanna go over the pros and cons. So some of the pros here, um, huge opportunity for starving artists. Artists historically have kind of been screwed over in many cases, like, uh, there's artists where some of their works are worth like $100 million, but during their lifetime, they were starving. They were poor. And it wasn't until after they died that they were finally compensated for the value that they gave to society. And then even in modern times, it can be pretty bad with a lot of record label companies screwing over artists. You hear about this all the time. And so this is a huge opportunity for artists to basically cut out the middlemen and get compensated for the value that they give to society. Another pro, smart contracts. You can attach a royalty contract to a piece of artwork and get paid every single time that it's bought or sold. This is something you can do automatically and indefinitely. The other pro is you can flex. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. One of the biggest things is gonna be video games and the metaverse. And this is the thing that I'm the most bullish on. I cannot stress how big this is going to be. It is going to be huge. And I know this because I have spent tens of thousands of hours playing all kinds of different video games. And I've also spent tens of thousands of hours doing finance and you know investing in crypto related stuff and i can see how these two things are going to interconnect and then another pro is there is just huge upside uh nfts are still relatively new some cons here, it is extremely speculative. Most NFTs are going to go to zero. They're gonna be worth nothing. And then market adoption is going to be very slow. And the reason for that is because most people don't see the value of NFTs. Now, after watching this video, if you watched it all the way through, first of all, thank you, you are awesome. And second of all, you probably see the value of NFTs now. Our grandparents didn't really understand how credit cards work in the same way that our parents a lot of the time don't understand how cryptocurrency works. And many of us probably don't understand how NFTs work. However, that never changed the fact that credit cards eventually caught on and now pretty much everyone uses them but it did take a while and market adoption can be slow. So my conclusion here, this is not financial advice. Uh, be very, very careful if you are going to buy NFTs. This is something that is complicated. It takes a lot of practice. So what I would recommend you do is look at NFT drops and then try to predict which ones are going to be valuable and write your predictions down, wait a month after the drop and see which ones come true. Then go back, reverse engineer why you were right or why you were wrong. Hope you enjoyed the video check out my other videos right here i made them just for you go ahead gently tap that like button hit the subscribe button ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts comments criticisms etc and i will see you next time <laughs>